I want to take you on a tour of Colombian food. I'm going to be photographing or videoing pretty much everything I eat while I'm here because Colombian food is so delicious and so wonderful that I want y'all to see it. Now you're going to see some things that you're going to be like, uh, what's that? Or, hmm, this is something I would never put in my mouth. But I tell you, I'm, I'm not a hugely picky eater, but there are some things that I've tried that scared me when I went to try them in my lifetime. Like, Kui. I actually tried Kui. For those of you who don't know what Kui is, I'll tell you. It's guinea pig. Yeah. But Colombian culture kind of dictates that you eat what you're given and if if you turn down food that you're presented with, it's offensive. This, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of that in a second, but I was in a situation when I was back in Bogota and somebody gave me Kui and I had to try it. And it was actually a foreign counterpart who gave it to me, so there was no turning it down. So I ate it, just so you know. Tastes like chicken, seriously, just like chicken. Anyway, so as I was saying, Colombian culture, if you turn down food, it's almost offensive to the people. They, they react to it as if you feel like you're too good for their food. This happens a lot with my mother-in-law. And um, I don't eat a lot anymore. I eat real small portions. And my mother-in-law likes to serve me these mammoth meals that, I mean, even a person with a huge appetite could not eat all of it. And so I've been, you know, this is the first time I've been eating like this at her house. And so if I normally eat something like this big and she serves me like this big, I'm sending over half of it back. And it's been a struggle on this trip because she thinks I don't like what she's cooking, but that's not true. It's that I'm just not going to eat any more of that. I mean, it's bad enough. The food of Colombia is like carbohydrate, 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 meat, and carbohydrate. Every once in a while, they might have a little bit of a salad, but like the salad we had the other night, I think the one meal I forgot to photograph, we had a salad which was lettuce with pineapple and cream that it was all mixed together. It had cream on it. Now the cream in Colombia is like the consistency of our yogurt. So it made like a really thick, yummy dressing. She had mixed the, the cream with the pineapple beforehand before mixing it all together. And it was actually delicious, but it was not a healthy salad. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll let you know how much weight I gained after this trip, but it's gonna be a lot because every morning I've eaten arepas con queso, which is like a corn patty, I guess. It's, it's a toasted corn patty with a big old slab of cheese on it. And it's not like, you know, like a sprinkling of cheese like you get on pizza. It's like this thick. And it's just a chunk, solid chunk of what we would call farmer's cheese and with salt and butter and it is delicious. But, oh man, so many calories. Nothing good in that. Well, I guess it has a lot of calcium. Calcium's good for you, right? Yeah. Anyway, so here we go. Check out all the foods of Colombia. In Colombia, they give you gloves to eat with. Okay, so I was hoping to have my hair done before I recorded this, but I was just called down to lunch by my mother-in-law, and in Colombia, when you're called for food, you run. It's a, it's a thing. So I'm gonna record what we're having for lunch like this. Don't judge. I'm usually much prettier. This is sopa de albondiga with a banana. And in Colombia, they put bananas in the soup to eat it. it. Sounds gross, but it's actually really good. This is Hugo, you like the count? Hugo de Guayaba, made at home. Um, I think we call guayaba in English passion fruit. So 
Yum. We eat a lot of soup in Colombia because it's not very expensive to make and it's very filling. This place is called the Crazy Mango. They serve mango with like salt and lemon and like um, condensed milk and all sorts of stuff. I recommend the salt and lemon, not the condensed milk. This is an Arepa con queso. It's basically mushed up corn into a patty with cheese in it. Doesn't get much better than that. Oh, and I slathered butter and salt. Mauricio put leche condensada, condensed milk on his, which I do not see why anybody would damage such goodness with that, but it's a big thing here. That's cheese. These spoons. Look, it's like just as big as my thumb. <laughs> they suck. These are all the different sauces you can have. I don't know what any of the sauces are. Mali, do you love the bunuelos? That's a bunuelo. This meal was a meal that we actually ate at a friend of Mauricio's. She and her family invited us over for lunch one day and they served us a meal of fried chicken with rice and um, potato salad and this amazing salad. It's made up of watermelon, papaya, and avocado and it had a really yummy Italianish dressing on it and it was so good. Now, I am allergic to avocado. I just picked that out and I just didn't eat that part, but it was really good. And I don't normally like papaya either, but in this salad, it was absolutely perfect. This is the birthday cake that we got from Mauricio on his birthday. This is a very typical Colombian. They call it a refrigerator cake because you have to put it in the refrigerator to keep it cool. It's just your standard cake. The the frosting is, you know, drizzled chocolate ganache, but um, the cakes in Colombia are not nearly as sweet as the cakes that we have in the United States. This was a soup that we had. They, as I've mentioned before, they do a ton of soups in Colombia. The soups are quite cheap to do, and you can use less pretty produce when you're making a puree like this. And, and this was just a vegetable soup puree. The base was potato and numerous vegetables, obviously spinach, giving it the greenish color. And then a drizzle of cream throughout. And it is excellent. And Melly will eat this soup any day of the week, which is really weird because if I make it for her, she will not. But in Colombia, she ate soups like this every day and loved it. Um, great way to get vegetables down my child since she is a non-vegetable eating child. This was Melina's birthday cake. I have never figured out what kind of frosting they use on this type of cake. It was a super pretty cake and lovely, um, but not sweet at all. I want to say the frosting is like a heavy meringue sort of frosting. Melina loved it and everybody loved it. And of course, this is her while everybody's singing happy birthday. They had a surprise birthday party for her there and it was so amazing and it's so much fun. She had it she she was going around saying, This is the best birthday ever. And this is one of my personal favorites in Colombia. It looks disgusting, I know. It is called Bandeja Paisa. Um and it includes rice and beans, which those two things alone I could just live on while I'm in Colombia. Um, sausage, plantain, an egg, meat, and this thing, and arepa, which is, you know, your corn masa cake. Uh, it's just a, you know, a thin, almost like a corn pancake, um, which are honestly a um, acquired taste. I, I love them now. I did not love them when I first moved to Colombia. Uh, salted potatoes. And I think that's it. And then, of course, sometimes they have morcilla on it. And morcilla is, is what we know in the United States as blood sausage, which I always give to Mauricio. And he is always happy to eat that. 
the the weird thing on the slide you see here is called chicharron and we know it as pork rind it's basically the skin of the pork deep fried this is a close-up of chicharron it is pork skin with a thick layer of meat and fat on it that's been sliced so it it stays relatively flat instead of curling up when you fry it this is an um, arepa de chocolo con queso which is a sweet corn cake which now these i loved from the first day i tried them because they are really like if you ever had like sweet polenta that had chunks of corn in it imagine that flattened out into a pancake and kind of toasted on the sides kind of thicker than that if that's what it tastes like and then it has a big slab of cheese and i made reference to the slab of cheese but oddly enough i guess i wasn't with it when i was taking pictures in the morning so i was never quite able to uh, get a picture of an arepa con queso that i ate in the morning which i ate literally every morning i was there um but this is you can see how thick the cheese is and this was amazing. And then of course the drink here is Hugo de Mora in leche. So um, blackberry juice in milk. And at first I thought the idea of milk, juice in milk was weird, but after you try it, it's really, really good. It's like almost drinking a melted, milksh uh, melted milkshake. Melted milkshake, I'm so awesome. It's one of the juices that I will drink there. I try not to drink juice just simply because it's. I was diabetic for a while and um, it's, it's really bad for your blood sugar. Um, so I try not to drink sweet drinks ever, but every once in a while I will take a sip or two. And I included these pictures because this is what you text your sister when you are a Colombian going to visit Colombian, Colombia and you text it to your sister to torture her. Um, oddly enough, why you would text powdered milk to somebody is weird to me. But yeah, that is apparently one of those things. This brand of powdered milk is one of the things my sister-in-law and this is very much about Colombia as does the Choco Ramos and the cakes. Um, the, the pastries in Colombia, especially this, this is like their equivalent of Hostess and you see the orange Choco Ramos in the middle. And basically that's, if you look to the side, you see the pound cake. Imagine that a small like half piece of that dipped in that chocolate stuff that we have the same kind of chocolate on those like tasty cake donuts that are chocolate and Finally, uh, finally, let me show you this. This is masa mora. Masa mora is corn with milk and sugar. And it's served sometimes warm, sometimes cold. And you eat it with a spoon. And so, as you can see, I did not accomplish the goal of uh, filming every single meal. I did as much as I could remember, but there were some mornings I hadn't had coffee and I just forgot pretty much every morning to record. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.